Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. You know who it is. It's your boy Big Mike with BZ Cooks. So today we're going to be cooking spatchcock chicken on the Lone Star Grill's insulated cabinet smoker. Now it's usually called the IVS for insulated vertical smoker because it's upright and vertical, duh. But today I'm going to show you tips and tricks on how to use your smoker and it's especially for the person out there who has been looking at Lone Star Grills and is not quite sure what smoker you want to get. But after you see this video today, you're probably going to wind up getting one of these because this is pretty much a set it and forget it type of smoker. All right. So without further ado, let's get started in this cook and I'll show you exactly how to set everything up. Stay tuned. It is hot out here, man. For science. For science. For science. All right, as you can see right here, I've got two chickens. This is one gallon of water with one cup of kosher salt added to it for a simple salt brine. If you do not have kosher salt, you can use table salt. Just cut it in half and use one half cup of table salt for every gallon of water that you use. All right guys, here is our chicken. We are going to spatchcock it. So what I have here are a pair of gardening shears. You can use kitchen shears, but I picked these up. They're spring loaded and they cut really good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut right along the backbone of this chicken so that we can spatchcock it or AKA butterfly it. So you just want to come right along here, along that backbone. These shears are pretty strong, so it's really nothing to cut through this chicken. Now you can also use this method for Thanksgiving when you're cooking turkeys. The reason why we spatchcock is because it distributes the heat evenly among the bird, okay? When you cook it normally, because of the way the bird is standing, it doesn't get heat distributed evenly and it cooks uneven, which is why it takes um, about a little longer for your dark meat to cook than it does for the chicken breast to cook, okay? Pretty easy to do. All right. So we've got through our bird, trim off any excess you got in there. And there's a little piece right here. You can see that. All right, so there's a little piece. See that white piece in the middle right there? We're just gonna cut that a little bit. That's gonna allow us to flip the bird over, press down on it. You wanna listen for that click? There it is. So we're just gonna take a little bit of olive oil and we're gonna pour that on our bird. Now, normally you would do this for the rub to stick to the bird. In this case, the bird is already wet, so we don't necessarily, we don't necessarily need it for the bird to um, adhere to our seasoning, but for browning purposes and getting that nice brown color on your chicken, definitely wanna use that. Okay, so take your favorite rub and you're going to season your chicken. So we're gonna season it on the bottom first, okay? The reason being is that we want this bird to look pretty when we're done with it. And if we start on the bottom first, all of your rub is going to rub off when you get ready to season this side. So, you wanna get underneath the arm of the chicken. Okay, get, under, get those underarms of that chicken. Okay, season it all over. Shout out to my man Darren over at D-Dub's Rub and Grub Seasonings. This is his award-winning chicken seasoning, guys. You gotta try this out. The link will be in the description if you wanna check D-Dub out over at D-Dub's Rub and Grub Seasoning. And I've been using it on everything, like literally. I use it on eggs, burgers, you name it. You can use this rub, and he has different rubs too. All right. So there we have it, our bird is ready to go. We're gonna get outside and I'm gonna show you how 
to get your smoker ready. Okay guys, stay tuned. All right, here we have Mr. Arthur Fonzarelli again. This is the full size Lone Star Grills insulated smoker. All right, so let's look down here. We have our firebox guys. So let's open this up so you can see. Now I bought this back in 2014. So they have made some improvements or changed the design. But here we have our quote unquote firebox, okay? So it has a tray down here. Okay. That's gonna catch all of your ashes. Let's open it. This is the cooking chamber. Now, if you see under here, I have four half foil pans. What I use these for is for my water pan. Now there, this is sitting, actually sitting on the water pan. There's a water pan underneath that. So let me show you why I stopped using that water pan. For one, it gets really messy because everything that you're cooking drips down into that water and it drains out over here. Let me show you. Okay. So, this is where our airflow comes from. You can open this and close it. That is our drain. I'm using four water pans. This really helps control the heat, guys. Um, it does get hot in there, but to control your heat, um, before I was having huge heat spikes with the water pan as I filled it up. Now, we're gonna be using wood chunks, all right? So I'll explain to you why we're using wood chunks, what kind of wood chunks, and how to get our fire going. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so I've got my fire pit open. I've got two chunks of post oak wood, all right? I'm going to put my wood chunks right here on this side, okay? Now I'm going to take some charcoal and I'm going to put charcoal on top of these. Typically what I would do is I would make one big L shape um, line of charcoal and then I would like that. I would um, take my wood, my weed burner and get that fire started, all right? But for today, we're only gonna do one line because I'm only cooking chicken. We're gonna get some charcoal here. That should be more than enough. I'm gonna just take my charcoal here and I'm gonna stack it on top of the wood, okay? Top of the wood. Now, let me tell you something. This pit takes about an hour or two just to get up to temperature with just the charcoal. To that. Okay, see I have that. Now my wood is underneath there. That wood is gonna give me the smoke. This charcoal is gonna give me the heat. But we gotta get our chamber up to temp fast. I don't want to wait two hours to put my chicken on. I'm going to light this so we can get our coal started with our weed burner. But I'm going to show you how to get this cooking chamber up to temp so you don't have to wait as long. All right, so I've got a weed burner. You can get these at your uh, Home Depot. I got this one at Harbor Freight if you have those in your area. I'm just going to turn this on here, get my fire started, and I'm just going to burn Get the, um, the coals right here at the edge started. All right, now that I've got those going, I can take this, sit it right in there, and we're gonna close it. All right, now the airflow comes from here. Leave this all the way open, okay, until you get up to temp, and then you're gonna shut it down uh, and leave just a little bit, like a sliver of it open, okay? So now I'm gonna open up the chamber and show you how I get my pit up to temp um, while these down here are bringing it up to the real temp, okay? So we're gonna get this going where I can at least put the chicken on and get it to hold temp until this catches up 
to the cooking chamber if that makes any sense to you guys if it doesn't leave a comment in the comment section and i will answer that question for you guys all right all right guys so i'm going to open up my chamber and show you exactly what i do to get the smoker up to temp all right here we go so so i'm going to take my weed burner And I'm gonna heat up this chamber until that chamber gets up to temp. All right, notice. I'm gonna heat the grates, I'm gonna heat the walls, I'm gonna heat the water, everything in here. And when I close it shut, it's gonna hold that temperature and I'll show you. Now, as you can see, I got a raging fire in there. <laughs> And yes, it's getting up the temp. And what you see burning in there is the oil and the residue from uh, from other cooks. You know, when your grill is seasoned like that. So I just basically get it cooking until there's fire everywhere. Now my grates will be sanitized because of that fire. But as soon as I close the hatch, it's gonna put that fire out and my grill will be hot. Now you may not get this kind of fire in your pit in your smoker but you just need to use this weed burner to heat it up okay so i'm going to close it and then i'm going to show you what the tip has gotten up to one second all right guys you see that we are now up to 275 climbing to 300 degrees it may not hit three but this is just where I need it because that fire is going to die down. As soon as I open this up, it's going to lose some of that heat. I'm going to put my chicken on and it's going to start to cook as the coals down at the bottom are burning. All right. So you see, this is a very quick and easy way to get your pit up to temp. All right, guys. So check this out. Our temp is down to probably 257. All right. I'm gonna open up the cooking chamber and we're gonna put our chicken on the second rack, okay? Let's hurry up and get it on there. Right? Yes. two chickens ready to go we're gonna come back in about an hour hour and a half just to check on the color see if they need to be spritzed and check the temperature on them okay see you soon okay guys so the chicken has been on for about two hours or so um, we're gonna check temp and then we're gonna flip it over so we can try to get that skin on top to render a bit okay all right so we're looking good here we're looking real good isn't that beautiful? Woohoo, baby. Okay. So our breast for the chicken on this side is sitting at about 160. The chicken on this side, the breast is still sitting at 148. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this chicken here and switch sides because it's cooler on this side. Well, you know what? Let's put them both on this side. But let's get this one skin side down for maybe about 30 minutes or so okay cook it on the hot side and just to let you know the temperature has been staying at about 250 since we started it okay remember we got it up to 300 it dropped down to 250 as it started to cool off um, but since then it's been at 250 the entire time i'm telling you this thing here is a beast it will Ooh -wee. time to check on that chicken i think it's ready now i came back out and flipped it back over so let's check and see what the temps are now our legs here we're at 171 166 so about 10 more minutes guys so i'm not going to bring you back out here to look at this chicken again by the way temp is still holding at 250. 
and that was one line of charcoal. This thing is a, a real beast. This is a workhorse, guys. So um, we're gonna come back once I can take this off of the smoker. It should be done, and then we're gonna taste it for science. All right, chickens out of the smoker. I don't know if you can see these, but these are. Oh man, look at that! I got juice running everywhere. Whew. All right, let's uh, let's carve these up. All right, very simple to do. So because it's been spanch cocked, very easy to cut through these. Let's see here, half of that. But I want you to see this chicken breast. Yeah, it's just juicy, nice and soft. Man, brining definitely makes a difference too. Okay. All right, well, let's give this a bite of science, you guys. Mmm. Look at that. Juice just dripping off of it. Nice and tender. And that rub is really good. So if you like the video, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me some suggestions for things to cook in the future. If you want to see more content, click the links above. If you want to subscribe, hit the circle down in my left, your right hand corner. Okay, guys. So um, without further ado, I'm going to sign out, guys. I'm going to finish eating this uh, last piece of chicken. And we'll see you guys in the next video. This is Big Mike signing out with BZ Cooks.